Hey there, welcome back to my video slideshow series. If you want to watch this entire series, you can start at the beginning. The All the links will be in the description. But today we're going to go through the front end. The front end is written in Vue.js, and we'll go through all the bits and pieces uh, to make the front end work. So very quickly, uh, let me just jump back to the screen share, and I will show you what it is that we are making. OK, so the basic uh, parts of this application are going to be primarily two screens with a third one that is for the login. Uh, the first one that you see here is the one that somebody would use on their phone. Um, and it's just very simple. It lets you select an image. Uh, when you select an image, we will be able to upload it. So I'm just going to grab one and hit open. You see that it shows you the image name and then you hit send and it says adding an image please wait and it just runs through the whole thing and then it's a success that's really all there is to it the second screen is the slideshow itself <laughs> i got some good photos going on here but uh what you should see is yeah here's the one i just uploaded so keep in mind this one's a little bit smaller because it got resized a long time ago whenever i uploaded it but it continues to roll through these photos as we go so let's jump into the front end with Vue.js, and i will show you how this was made all right, so over in VS Code, I have a folder open in my party slideshow project, and this is the front end. The front end is built in Vue.js. Like I said, I am using Vite for the uh, for the server on the local dev and also just for building out the project in the first place. It just kind of makes it super easy to build. And um, it automatically gives you a lot of scaffolding, and the scaffolding that you see here is the stuff that pretty much came with the project. Inside of Source is... Um, Again, more scaffolding, but this is where the customization really kind of happens, right? So uh, first things first, uh, in assets, I didn't really change anything in here. First off, I guess we're going to jump into the main.js file. And uh, there's not a lot in here like you would expect. Um, it pretty much just uh, imports the assets, imports main.css, even though there's nothing in there. Uh, we create the app, and then we say we're going to use router. So I'm using the view router here to make a single page application that can support multiple routes. And there's a few different routes that it handles. Now, if we go into app.view, um, I just did some basic stuff inside of here. This is for the, the whole application. So just setting the uh, the view height, the view width to 100, uh, margin zero, display flex, that kind of stuff for CSS. And then uh, here in the template, we're including the, the router view, which is going to help with the routing. Now, if we go to router and we go to index, uh, I've created the individual pages here that uh, all react to the individual paths as they uh, come in from the browser. So slash is home, and we use the home component. TV slideshows, the thing you see on the on the screen when uh, when the, sh the photos are playing, um, that uses the TV slideshow uh, component. And then login uses the uh, the login view and. Um, I'll go through each one of those next. Now, if we jump into views, you can see I have, they, they line up here, home view, login view, TV slideshow view. So home view, login view, TV slideshow view, makes sense. Um, on the home view, there's there's quite a bit in here um, just to make it so I can upload the photos. Um, we'll start out by just uh, setting up some defaults here. So we return a default data set and um, it just says the appearance is set to default, show warning is set to false. Uh, selected file is set to null, and then the warning message is there was an error try again. Again, these are just defaults, and nothing really happens from this uh, from the beginning. I've created a few uh, methods here. So we have one for on file changed, and uh, this is what happens when a file is selected uh, with the uh, with the image selector. We're going to change the appearance to image selected, which is what makes the view change uh, from the select a photo to the two buttons that say upload. Um, show warning is set to false here because there's no warning. And then we are setting the selected file to the file that is actually selected by the user. Uh, the next one is on upload. Um, this is when the user hits the upload button. So we change the appearance here to uploading to change the the view to say, you know, this is uploading right now. Uh, we just set warning to false. I show I set show warning to false on all of these unless there is a warning to show. So it kind of just flops in and out. So we're going to append file to the form data. Uh, that's the actual like field name. And we're going to append the selected file and then the selected file name. So this is what append requires it. You know, we're just going to use the name, the value, and then the, the file name. Next, we're going to try to upload this. And I'm using Axios for this. You technically don't need to. You could just use like... Uh, 
you know, regular Ajax style style requests in JavaScript, but Axios was easy and I just grabbed it and threw it in here. This is where we hit the API upload endpoint that I talked about in the previous episode here. And um, we are sending it the form data. Then we're going to set this uh, the warning message to success. We're going to set show warning to true or set the appearance to default if you know if the upload succeeds. Um, if we get an error, then we're going to set the appearance to default uh, again, and we're going to set the warning message so an error will show up if the upload fails, and then show warning is set to true here. So that way we're we're able to show the message that it that it failed. If they hit the cancel button, then we're just going to reset everything back to the initial view. Add some styling here for the boxes. So, you know, you have the upload box itself, you have the input type of file. Now, this is a little tricky um, because the input that you get from the browser by default has a little box for the file name and it has the little button and, and things like that. It looks kind of garbage on a, on a mobile device and honestly, no one really uses it. So instead, what I'm doing is I'm setting the display to none here, and I'll get later on to show you that uh, how that works. So we're, we're hiding this, and we're just replacing it with the button, which is actually like a label, and using that to interact with. This is actually like the, the button itself that I'm going to create uh, further down when I actually create the template. So now into the template, I, I've got the, the box itself on the outside. You've got uh, the title to add an image. And then this is where you start to get into the, the view uh, JS stuff, right? So if show warning is true, then we show then the warning message is printed here. If appearance is image selected, then we will show this div and then it says this is the image that you selected. Um, if appearance is uploading, that means that we are uploading a photo actively right now. We're just going to say, please wait. And if the appearance is default, then the rest of this is uh, the rest of this is going to show up. So this is where you take the file input, the basic file input, and kind of hide it away, and then instead use this other this other button. So uh, the input here, this is all going to be hidden. And then uh, the label is actually what we are going to show, right? So the label has this select image option on it. Input is inside of it, but this is hidden. It's just here for, um, it, it's here because it needs to be a form field, but otherwise it's not displayed. On the screen next we got a button here this is the send button so if appearance is image selected meaning that we've already selected an image uh, from here then this one shows up and this one disappears and we say um we add a class to make it look nice and then we have the on click for on upload right so that's up above and then we have the cancel button, which of course is just necessary to be able to get you back in a single page application so you don't get stuck. And so this is, again, it's on cancel. Again, this is only showing if image selected. So bottom line, at the end of the day, all of this stuff works together to make this nice upload experience. And it uh, it's, you know, it's pretty straightforward. So if we go back to here, show you again, right? It says success here because I just uploaded one before, but if I hit select image, it's going to let me pick one. I can pick an image, I can hit open, then it changes the view, it shows the send and the cancel button. If I hit cancel, it goes back. I can just do it again, select image, pick an image, and then hit send, and then it says adding, and then we uh, you get the success message, and then you can hit select image and just do it all over again. So that's the home view, that's what you see there. The next one is the login view. Uh, this is the, the login form that you see if you're not logged in. And I'll get to that logic here in, in just a second, right? So the login view uh, has uh, some default data, again, set up. So passcode is empty, show warning is false. And then I've written a method here for pass uh, to check the password, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to get the query string uh, from, the, from the input. And then we are going to get the URL parameters and we're going to get the redirect URI. What this does is so when you go to the home page, if you're not logged in, you get redirected to the login page. This redirect URI contains the logic for where to send you back to after you log in. So that way, when you log in, it knows to send you back to the home page and not to someplace else. You're just sticky there. Um, I think I can probably show that here. So, so on this page, if I go to the application tab and I just clear out this app session cookie, this is going to log us out. Now, if I refresh this, 
what it should do is say enter the magic word, right? So so hit that and hit login. Sorry, incorrect password. Mm -hmm. But if I put the right password in and hit login, you'll see here this redirect URI, it's it's encoded, but this is redirect URI is just slash to take us back to the home page. And if I hit login, it's going to know to send me back to the home page after I log in. So anyway, back to the code. All of this here is just collecting that that redirect URI. Okay, so the next part of the password check here is just to set up an HTTP request uh, to send the password. First of all, I create an array called URL encoded data pairs, um, and then I add the password to this. So password equals, and then the password that the that has been entered into entered into the field. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take the that URL encoded data pairs, and we're going to join it with an ampersand and uh, just replace spaces with plus signs. That's just for cleaning up the, the information in the URI. Now we uh, we just do an open here and do set up a post request to the API login endpoint. This is where the password gets posted to. Um, we set up the headers uh, that telling the application that this is form data being sent over, and then we send it. It sends out, it comes back, this uh, response listens. If it gets a 200 response back, meaning that we've successfully logged in, then we redirect. If not, we show the warning. Uh, that's pretty much all there is to it. The rest of the setup here with CSS is just uh, getting it to look nice. Uh, each one of the form fields and things getting getting some styles to fit the screen appropriately. And then finally the setup. So you have the login box, you have a title, um, if the warning is true, then we say incorrect password. If it's not true, then nothing shows up here. And then we have the form field uh, with the with the the passcode on here. And uh, right now, there's a placeholder that says say the magic word, and then uh, the button for that has the click listener. So click, you get you run pass check. So when this is clicked, it comes up here, runs password check. We run through this whole thing. You listen for this uh, load event from the response, and then take the action. That's how the login works. All right, now onto the TV slideshow view. Um, I'm gonna run this one from the bottom to the top because I think it makes more sense uh, now that I've done this a couple of times. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so the uh, the template here is pretty straightforward, right? There's, there's a frame around the outside. There is a image holder that, um, that is just the space for where the image sits. And then there are really just two images, and these are slideshow images. Uh, so let me just jump into that real quick here. If we go to slideshow image in the components, um, there's not a whole lot to this. It's really just um, the layout of what an image looks like on the screen. So you've got the little relative timestamp, and then you've got the image source, which uh, which comes in from the API response. Um, the styling here makes it all look nice and fit on a on a big screen TV, and uh, the rest of it pretty much just goes as necessary, right? So there's there's a few props here. This uh, takes the image, which is the image here, and the visible, which is should this be shown or not, and then uh, the timestamp, which is what shows up in the in the corner or relative time. I'm doing a little bit of conversion here for relative time to figure out. So it's not showing an actual timestamp. It's saying so many minutes ago, so many hours ago, uh, things like that. Anyway, back to the TV slideshow view. There's always two images on the screen. One is just always behind the the other one, and you fade uh, fade them back and forth um, by messing with their their visibility. Now, in the style section here, I probably shouldn't have put this in the TV slideshow view because this is actually global uh, styles. But this is what sets up that funny background that scrolls through the 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 green and you know the green and red like Christmas theme stuff now up to the the real meat of it here which is it kind of explains how the photos slide in and out i am using this uh, relative time package from y <laughs> Yar yario i don't know um this is what does the does the magic where you give it a timestamp and it returns like how many minutes ago or seconds ago or days or weeks or months or years ago that the that the image relates to now we go down now let's go down here to the mounted section and we'll see here that first off I do I do a set interval on this so this is every seven seconds this is this whole process is running and then what I do to swap the image is we set hidden image to either zero or one right so that's flopping which image we're showing, right? So if visible image is zero, we set it to one. If it's not zero, then we set it to zero. So it goes zero, one, zero, one, zero, one. Hidden image is always going to be zero or one. 
back and forth. Um, then we do a very, very simple fetch to API slideshow next. And I will show you what that returns. So uh, this is what the response looks like uh, from the API, right? It's just giving you the name of the photo, which is actually the like the location of the photo, then the time taken, and the last viewed timestamp. Um, last viewed isn't actually used uh, in this. It just it's just part of the return. The time the time taken is what shows the relative time. So we uh, we get the data, right? So we we get a response back from this fetch, and then we actually get the data as JSON here. Right. And then what we do is we set hidden image, which now we know hidden image, right? This is the, it's either zero or one, right? So we set this dot images, either zero or one dot image to the file name. And then we set this dot images, zero or one dot relative time to the relative time. And we get in, so we're using the relative time package. So relative time dot from, and then you get a new date from your time taken times a thousand to get the, get the right timestamp format. <clears throat> and then it will change that into seconds ago, minutes ago, or whatever it needs to show up on the screen. And then I set a timeout at this point uh, for two seconds. So we, we know we loaded the image. So here again, we're just going to grab the hidden image. I don't know that I necessarily needed to declare this twice, but it's just the way it's set up. So now what we're going to do is we're going to set this image is hidden vim, the hidden version of the image, right? So this is the one we just modified. We just set a new image inside of here and we just set the time. Now we're going to set the visibility of this hidden image to true. We're going to set the visible image to false. So we swap which one's visible just by setting this, this true or false. And then we set visible image equal to hidden image, and then it it just rolls it through. And um, that's really all that's necessary to uh, to make this have this effect of the image rolling through, right? So you can watch the photo change every seven seconds, just like this. Should just talk real quick about the about the login uh, feature. So let me grab that real quick here. So back to the router in index.js, there is a function in here, and this is just a feature of the view uh, router, where I say before each payload, we're going to call our API endpoint for slash API slash is authenticated. This just returns, is this user logging in or logged in? It's going to look at the session data, it's going to decode it, and then it's going to tell you yes or no, this person has already logged in. If we get anything other than a 200 response, we're going to redirect. And then we return the path slash login and we set this redirect URI to where we are right now, the full path of where we are right now. That makes the whole login work. So this would, if the user is not logged in, redirects on the login page, the login page shows up, it's got the redirect URI and the URI. And then when you log in, it knows to send you back to where you were. After you've logged in, then you get past this step and it you don't have any failures. And that is the entire front end application, the Vue.js application. In the next video, I am going to cover the small application that runs on the laptop that will automatically send photos to the slideshow as they're taken on the, the, the more expensive camera that's in the photo booth room. That one is very straightforward and will only be a few minutes. See you next time.